ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Oi! Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's the star because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got gold. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. Colonel Pierce paced the floor of his headquarters at Fort Drake as he talked to his aide, Captain Vale. Captain, twice we've lost wagons bringing supplies and guns to the fort. I know, sir. The Indians seemed to know just when they were coming. That's it, exactly. Someone must have tipped them off. Someone in this stockade is a traitor. There's only one who might have the chance to pass on the information, sir. Yeah? The army scout, Pender, comes and goes as he pleases. I've suspected Pender right long. Of course, we must have proof before we can bring charges against him. From now on, have Pender followed whenever he leaves the stockade. Yes, sir. Furthermore, I, uh, I want you to send a courier to meet the three wagons we expect tomorrow. Give orders for the wagons to use the river trail instead of coming through the valley where the other two attacks took place. I'll send a courier at once, Colonel. And as you ordered, I'll have Pender watch from now on. Sir. One of those wagons is bringing a load of gunpowder, which we need so badly. Go at once and carry out my orders. Yes. Later, in a grove on a ridge overlooking an Apache village, the army scout Pender pulled to a stop. Oh, oh there! As he dismounted, an Indian stepped from the tall brush. Me not think you'd get here so soon. I left the stockade earlier and I intended, Crowfoot. What's more, I'm not going back. Uh, why you say that? They found out about me. I listened outside the colonel's door. Heard him telling the captain to have me followed. Well, I left in a hurry before the captain had a chance to do it. But how you help Apache if you not go back to stockade? I found out something else while I listened. Three more wagons are coming to the fort. And the colonel is sending orders by courier for them to stay away from the valley and take the river trail. Oh. When wagons come? Tomorrow. Now you tell Chief Big Wolf to have his braves ready to attack them on the river trail. Uh. And I'll see you tomorrow, Crowfoot. So long. Ready, one. Get up! Oh! Following afternoon, the three army wagons moved slowly along the river trail. Get up! Get along there! I'd like to know what the reason is for changing our route. Ah, uh, what's the difference? We lose only a few hours for taking the river trail. Get up there! If we reach the fort, I'm gonna... Hey, Indians! Holy mackerel! Start shooting! 
They're coming from every direction. Whoa, 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 whoa. We haven't a chance. The three drivers and the few troopers guarding the wagons were soon overpowered, falling under the savage attack by the Apaches. Some distance away, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, who were riding along the river trail, heard the distant battle. He must have him. Listen. Oh, 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 he's 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 oh, oh. Sounds like Indians attacking. Uh, All right, let's go. Monsilver. Come on. By the time the masked man and Indian reached the scene of the attack, the Indians had left. Oh, 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 easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Oh, we're too late, Toto. Uh, tracks show... Indians drive away with three wagons. Take Cooper's horses. We'll see if any of them are still alive. The two men went from one trooper to another, but none were alive. The Lone Ranger thought a moment, then spoke. Otto, the fort isn't far from here. I'll go report this to Colonel Pierce. They want to see the bodies for identification before they're buried. You wait here until I come back. Uh, me wait. Little big fella. Come the masked man had helped Colonel Pierce in the past and had no difficulty when he asked to be taken to the Commandant's headquarters. The Colonel greeted him as an old friend. Welcome, my friend. I'm very glad to see you again. It's good to see you again, too, Colonel, but frankly, I brought bad news. Bad news? That's right. Briefly, the masked man told about the attack and of the death of the troopers on the river trail. It's terrible, terrible. I'll go with you at once and take some men along to look after those poor fellows. Captain, order a squad of men to prepare to ride at once. Yes, sir. We could hear the attack from a distance, sir. Those men didn't have a chance. This is the third attack in a month. The arrival of each wagon train was an army secret. Yet the Apaches found out. Do you have any idea how, sir? Yes. An army scout named Pender. I'm sure he's the one who gave him the information. What makes you so sure? One of the other scouts reported that he saw Pender riding into the Apache village last week, just before the last attack took place. You didn't have Pender brought before you? No. Yesterday, I ordered dispatch sent, changing the route of the wagons. Also, I ordered that someone be detailed to follow Pender. He left hurriedly before that order could be carried out. He, he didn't return. He must have learned of those orders somehow and left to tell the Apaches. I don't know how he could have. Anyhow, he left hurriedly. And now I hear of another attack. Your horse is ready, sir, and the men are waiting. Very good, Captain. Let's go. Right. Soon, the Lone Ranger with the colonel and the troopers arrived at the scene of the attack. Oh, oh, oh. The unfortunate victims of the raid were sadly placed upon pack horses, and the troopers started slowly back to the oh. fort. The colonel lingered a few moments to talk to the masked man. This, this massacre is an outrage. We must put a stop to such attacks once and for all. But the Apaches greatly outnumber your men, colonel. Yes, I know. I've sent for reinforcements, but my request has been denied. Why? The general in charge of this area is new. He sent me a dispatch saying that to march against the Apaches in force will cause a general uprising. Toto and I'll stay in this territory and do some scouting. If the Apaches show evidence of making a move, we'll let you know, sir. Thank you. I know I can count on you. I'll get back to the fort now. Goodbye for a while. Adios. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What we do now, Kimasabe? Toto, we'll keep close watch on Big Wolf and his braves. The masked man and his Indian friend made camp in the woods not far from the Apache village. That evening, they rode to the ridge overlooking the Indian village. Who's a scout? Who's a scout? Who's a scout? Who's a scout? Leaving their horses hidden among the trees, they cautiously moved forward on foot to see what was going on. From a vantage point behind a large boulder on the ridge, they looked down. Uh, it looked like them whole powwow near campfire front of Chief's wigwam. I wish we could hear what's going on. Chief's wigwam near foot of wooded slope. Me go down, get close, try here. What if they capture you, Tom? They will not capture me, Kimasabi. You wait, soon they come back. Silently, like a shadow, Tato disappeared into the underbrush. As time went on, the Lone Ranger became anxious. He knelt behind the boulder, watching intently. 
and listening for any sound that might indicate Toto had been discovered. Suddenly... You what? stand up. Raise hands high. Slowly, the masked man stood and turned to face the leering, painted face of Crowfoot, who stood holding a gun. Me take you to village. Apaches here of pale face who wear mask. Big wolf be happy. Let braves use tomahawks on masked man. You drop gun. What? The Lone Ranger had seen Tonto move silently behind the Apache and hold a knife at his back. Crowfoot, taken by surprise, hastily dropped his gun. Uh, you will not make sound. Good work, Tonto. We'll tie and gag him. Quickly, the masked man and Indian tied and gagged Crowfoot. When they finished, Tonto drew the Lone Ranger to one side and spoke in a low voice. Hey, get close, Kimasabi. We hear words of powwow. Go on. Soldier talk to Chief Big Wolf. Him tell Apache to attack Stockade. He must be that army scout pender. Ah. When we get close, soldier talk to Chief and other Indian. Tell him Colonel send for reinforcements. Him say for Chief to attack Fort at dawn. Say him have good plan to take Stockade. Chief agreed to attack at dawn tomorrow. An attack on the Stockade now has every chance of succeeding, Toto. We must act quickly. If Chief Big Wolf takes Fort Drake, every tribe in the territory will go on the war path. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real gold power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Toto reported that the Apaches planned to attack Fort Drake at dawn. The Lone Ranger realized the serious result of such an attack and knew the situation called for quick action. And what we do, Kimasabi? First, the colonel must be notified, Toto. I'll go to the fort. I want you to ride to Fort Davis, 15 miles west of here. I'll give you a note to Major Norton. Ah, and what we do with Apache Bray, we tied. His horse yonder in trees. All right, I'll take him to the stockade with me and turn him over to the colonel. I want to question him. Hurry, Toto, bring his horse here. We have no time to lose. The Lone Ranger and Toto hurriedly tied Crowfoot to his pony. Then the masked man rode with him to the stockade, while Toto started to Fort Davis. The prisoner, Crowfoot, sullenly refused to answer questions, and Colonel Pierce was worried when the Lone Ranger told him the news. We're in bad condition here to ward off such an attack. If that gunpowder had come through, we might have had a chance, but now... I've sent Toto with a note to Major Norton at Fort Davis, Colonel. I explain the situation fully. I hope he sends reinforcements. And that they come in time. I hope so, too. You mentioned that Tonto heard Pender say he had some plan to help the Apaches take the stockade. I wonder what he has in mind. Well, I don't know, but I'll try to find out. I'll leave the stockade and do some scouting. Your presence gives me some hope, my friend. I'll give the necessary orders to the men. Meanwhile, in the village, the army scout Pender was telling the chief his plan. Chief Big Wolf, the wagon is ready to roll. Now, you tell me why we take wagons to stockade. Sure, sure. Your braves left three kegs of gunpowder in the wagon. Well, I attached a long fuse to those kegs. That's the fuse hanging over the seat. Mm. Now, the ground in front of the stockade slopes down from a low ridge right to the big gates. 
We'll take the wagon to the ridge, stop it with the back of the wagon toward those gates. Then we unhitch the horses, light the fuse, and start it rolling down the grade. It'll land against the gates. The gunpowder will explode and blow them open. <laughs> then you and your braves ride right into the stockade. That's a good idea. <laughs> those soldiers are sure in for a big surprise. During the night, all preparations were made at the fort to stand off the expected attack. Just before the approach of dawn, Colonel Pierce stood on the rampart near the big gates, talking to Captain Vale. Well, Captain, it will soon come. Frankly, I'm greatly concerned. We can't hold them off very long unless we get more gunpowder and reinforcements. I'd be satisfied with the reinforcements, Captain. But it... See, what's that standing up on the ridge, Captain? It looks like the back end of a wagon, but... Well, by thunder, that's what it is. Do you see anyone near it? Uh, in this dim light, it's difficult to see much, sir. I will see... Oh, wait a minute. Huh? I do see some figures near it. I'm sure they're Indians. But the wagon, I don't understand. For a short time, the two officers stood watching the ridge. Soon it was light enough for them to see quite well. The ridge at the top of the slope was just beyond rifle range. There are two or three figures near that wagon. The Apaches must be waiting just beyond the ridge where they can't be seen. That's right, sir. But the attack should start most any time now. Yes, sir, no. We'll... See, look. The wagon is moving down the slope toward our gates. What? They're pushing it. But, Colonel, that's an army wagon. It's hey. some trick. Look, the Indians have appeared all along the top of the slope. They're waiting there. It's cut. It just struck me that the wagon may carry gunpowder. And they would know how to attach a fuse to make it explode at the gates. Order the men back quickly. Right, sir. Lieutenant, get the men back from the gate. Back from the gate. Pender had lashed the front axle of the wagon with rawhide so that it wouldn't turn but would roll in a straight line. The heavy vehicle moved slowly at first, then gathered momentum as it rolled down the slope toward the gates. A sputtering fuse which Pender had measured for exact timing hung over the dashboard. Pender and the Apaches watched in tense silence. But another had been watching, too, from a grove off to the right and part way down the slope. The Lone Ranger saw the rolling wagon and realized its purpose. Easy, steady, big fellow. Monson! The great white stallion sprang forward at a gallop and raced to intercept the wagon. Faster, big fellow. Faster! Monson! The Lone Ranger followed a course parallel to the ridge and halfway between the ridge and the stockade. The Apaches saw the racing steed and, realizing his intention, opened fire. Bullets flying close to the mask plan, but the great speed with which Silver was moving made him a poor target. Hurry, Silver! Faster! The magnificent white stallion heeded the urgency in his master's voice and exerted every ounce of strength at his command to increase his speed. At the stockade, the colonel and the captain had also seen the masked man galloping toward the rolling wagon. The masked man, he's trying to reach the wagon before it gets to the gate. The Indians are trying to stop him with gunfire. They're not close enough for a good shot. Have the men fire toward them to keep them back. Right, sir. Open fire. Hold the Indians back. Getting close to the wagon. I hope to heaven he makes it. Let's hope he doesn't get a bullet before he can reach it. The wagon had gained momentum and rolled heavily down the slope. The wagon was still several hundred yards from the stockade gates when the Lone Ranger reached it, and he turned silver so the horse was running alongside. Gaging the distance, the Lone Ranger, with a mighty effort, seemed to hurl himself from the saddle onto the wagon. Must have cut the fuse. He quickly cut the fuse, then turned and grasped the lever that applied the wagon brakes. The wagon slowly braked to a stop a few yards from the big gates. Open the gates! There's no way! Wonderful work! Oh, oh, easy, steady, big fella. There's gunpowder in that wagon, Colonel. Better have your men roll it inside. Bring in the wagon. The Apaches, enraged because the Lone Ranger had ruined their plan to blow open the gates, swarmed down the slope in reckless abandon. Here they come! Here they come! Constant gunfire, the wagon was hurriedly pushed into the stockade, and the gates were closed. (laughs) 
The withering fire from the stockade forced the Apaches back at first. Then they started circling the stockade, shooting flaming arrows and firing their guns constantly. For a short time, in spite of many casualties on both sides, the battle continued without abatement. But the superior numbers of Apaches began to fail, much to the concern of the colonel. We've been able to hold out this long because of that gunpowder we took from the wagon. But if this keeps up, we've been for. Don't give up, hope, Colonel. We're not beaten yet. You're the inspiration to be into the beam, sir. At least quite of all we can do. It... It's it. Look, coming over the ridge. The reinforcement. The sight of the newly arrived troopers galloping down the ridge brought relief to those within the stockade. For a short time, the Apaches withstood the onslaught. But when Chief Big Crow fell wounded and Pender was shot from his saddle, they were leaderless. The braves that were left tried to get away, but were soon subdued by the troopers. The battle ended as suddenly as it had begun. Tonto and the Lone Ranger stayed to help with the casualties. A few hours later, they were mounted on Silver and Scout near the stockade gates. Hey, friends, hey. I can't find words to thank you enough for all you've done. Thanks are necessary, Colonel. We're glad we were here to help. Your action this morning when you faced death to stop that wagon and cut the fuse was the most spectacular and courageous thing I've ever seen. Well, thanks, Captain. My only thought was to prevent the explosion. I, I didn't think of the risk. We have proof that Pender was behind the whole thing. He's badly wounded, but if he recovers, he'll face the charge of treason. Major Norton's men will take the Apaches to a reservation. Then our work here is done, Colonel. Oh, and I'll stop to see you when we come this way again. Fine. Adios, adios. adios. We owe our lives to those two, Captain. Yes, I know, sir. But though he's a friend and has been here before, you've never told me who the masked man is. Captain, he's, he's a man among men. Ready at all times to fight for God and for his country. He's the Lone Ranger. Cause champions are made, not fought. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. The fact that champions are made, not born, is a wonderful inspiration to all of us. Here's how it happened in the case of Red Shane Deanst, star second sacker of the St. Louis Cardinals. When he was bat boy for a team, to be a champ was young Red's dream. He learned to feel, to hit, to slide. And here's a tip to be your guide. Wheaties helped him hit his stride. Now Red makes that double play. Wheaties keep him on his way. Sure, Red Shane Deanst has been powering up on Wheaties for 20 years, since he was 11 years old. Good food, Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Let's go, Red. Hit a double. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen.